from one of San Diego's beaches and one of its iconic hotels and at my favorite time of the year, Christmas. To the history of Coronado and its role in U.S. naval history. And the Coronado Ferry Landing. This is Coronado, California. The first stop was the Catalina Historical Association. The association was founded in 1969, but this museum opened in 2000. The museum features permanent and changing exhibits. In the early days of submarines, the Navy's first full class of submarines included the USS Grampus and USS Pike, which were the only two on the west coast and they would reside in Coronado. That submarine technology exhibit is there, so I should talk a little bit about it. Ballast tanks allow submarines to dive and resurface. Large tanks are wrapped around the submarine's hull. They fill with water to make the submarine sink, and fill with air to make the submarine resurface. Submarines used periscopes for over a hundred years, but now they use cameras. And Camp Richardson, the first submarine school in San Diego Bay and along the entire Pacific was located in Coronado. Coronado is home to a Naval Air Station base and a Naval Amphibious base. The Naval area is known as North Island. In 1908, Teddy Roosevelt sent a fleet to visit Coronado. In 1911, the Navy set up its first camp on the island. The air station was established in 1917, and in 1963, it was granted the name the birthplace of naval aviation. Many milestones are associated with North Island. The first seaplane flight in 1911, the first mid-air refueling in 1923, the first non-stop transcontinental flight in 1923, the first United States aircraft carrier was also based in Coronado, and Coronado has played an important role in the development of aircraft carriers. All in all, there is a proud relationship between the Navy and Coronado. And these were paintings that caught my eye. All these paintings were on loan from the U.S. Navy Art Collection based in Washington, D.C. And then I checked out their gift store before leaving. There was Coronado before the Hotel del Coronado, and there is Coronado after the Hotel del Coronado. The Hotel del Coronado opened in 1888. It debuted as an architectural masterpiece. The Dell attracted wealthy guests from the Midwest, East Coast, and Europe, often staying for months at a time. And it was the largest hotel resort in the world when it opened. According to their website, Coronado's year-round sunshine and island-like allure ensured the Dell's reputation as a standout resort, being described as the unrivaled queen of seaside resorts. The hotel was constructed before San Diego had the materials or manpower necessary for such a major undertaking. 
Architects were brought in from the Midwest. Lumber and labor came from the Northwest. There was a lumber mill, foundry, and an electrical power plant on hotel property. In fact, the whole island was powered by their own power plant until 1922. And early employees were attracted from Chicago's finest hotels. The hotel opened only 11 months after construction began. Most guests traveled to the Dale by train and the wealthiest had their own private rail cars that were hitched to the train, then unhitched and stored at the hotel on a spur track. The hotel's chef would cook up the guests' catch of the day, as there was fishing and hunting to be done. The hotel was also one of the largest buildings to be powered by electricity when it opened. It also had early elevators, telephones, private bathrooms, and a fire alarm system. Hotel Del Coronado quickly became a mecca for sophisticated eastern travelers who had grown bored with resorts on the east coast and that of Europe. The hotel was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1977. The Reed Brothers, James W. Reed, Merritt Jonathan Reed, and Watson Reed designed the hotel. James Reed was the most prominent of the three. He is also notable for the Willard Library in Evansville, Indiana. The library was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1972. The Reed brothers also worked on the Cloud State Bank Building and the McCoy Memorial Library. Both were added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1978. Also, the Oregonian Building, the Cole Building, and the Fairmont Hotel, a five-star hotel, by the way. So these are the postcards that I bought. Now let's see if I can do better. Then it was time to go to Hotel Del Coronado. I visited Coronado once before as an adult circa 2016. Before that I came with the high school jazz band for a competition. I managed to pick a good time for a mostly pain-free drive which was the middle of the day. Quick tangent, I parked in a neighborhood upon my arrival and I got confused about where I parked my car, so I lost about 10 minutes looking around for it, circling, fearing it may have been towed. I even called the police, but thank God I found it. Moral of the story, these streets can be confusing, so be careful where you park and how you get back to your car. The crowds were definitely out at Coronado. If you wanted to skate, it would have been $40, with discounts for military, first responders, and hotel guests. Then I walked around the hotel shops, which gave me a Laguna Beach vibe. They all had a warm, high-end feel to them. By the way, Hotel Del Coronado was the largest wooden structure in the United States until 1944. Another thing that I did not get to do on this trip is brunch. I love buffets, and I am happy to report that brunch and breakfast buffets are back at Shearwater. Some people live life for the moments, and I live for the videos, the art. This video is more satisfying to me than the actual experience of being there. In some of the shots, you can see the Coronado Bridge in the background to the right. I wanted to feature it in my video more prominently, but I did not have enough time nor optimal light of day to make it happen. Maybe next time. Hey, brunch and the bridge. Of course, I almost forgot about Coronado's Hollywood history. It is most famous for being a major filming location for Some Like It Hot. It also inspired a hard-to-find movie which is named after it. 
Another thing I learned, actress Emma Stone spent her summers here as a child, going to the Dell and cosmic bowling and late night dining. The hotel was said to be Frank Baum's inspiration for the Emerald City in The Wizard of Oz. And there I am, goofing around and trying to be smooth. Celebrities who have lived in Coronado include Charlie Chaplin, Dick Van Dyke, and Orville Redenbacher. I feel that travel is a form of fashion. Just as putting on clothes makes you feel a certain way and says something about you, travel is kind of like putting on places. The hotel is also known for reports of a ghost. Kate Morgan, a young woman, checked into the hotel in 1892 alone and unhappy. She was apparently waiting for a lover to join her, who never did. She was estranged from her husband, and ultimately, she shot herself. And ever since, the place was said to be haunted by her ghost. This courtyard gave me Fashion Island in Newport Beach vibes. And there I am, proving I was there. The shops in the actual town of Coronado gave me a Balboa Island vibe. As you can see, I captured some of the Coronado Holiday Light Show. Then it was time to go to the Coronado Ferry Landing. The first ferry service between San Diego and Coronado dates back to 1886. The ferry landing area reminded me of Brooklyn, looking across at the Manhattan skyline. There was a tranquility and a sense of vibrance in the distance. This footage was grabbed from a webcam. You can only be so many places at one time. The ferry service has changed over the years. For many years, the fleet carried cars. Nowadays, the ferry is only open to people and bikes. Besides getting on and off the ferry, the ferry landing has a nice park, shopping, and dining. It was a nice final stop especially as a respite from the crowds of the hotel.
You know how you want to find that YouTube video you watched with all the pretty shots, but you can't find it anymore? Well, avoid that dreaded fate by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribe for the spirit of Christmas.